you should probably go for a rich iron deposit and that and that's because it will enable you to do deep mining now of course um there are going to be multiple rich de deposits of uh, throughout the land or and if you start out on a rich clay or rich uh stone deposit you might be you might ask like why would i why would i prioritize iron or fertile soil and that comes down to mid to late game because a rich iron deposit will enable you to do uh to craft uh armor pieces uh weapons and you are going to be able to trade multiple sets of items whereas with clay and rock uh the only thing that you can do is uh, create blocks and uh roof tiles and that's not going to be very important now of course from a food perspective you you could ask that that okay what what would i do with wild animals or berries and i think you would probably want to go for wild animals because you have multiple development uh choices for wild animals animals that give you more meat or uh, it doubles the amount of uh, meat you produce and also provide provides you with with hide that is used for a lot of crafting now that's pretty much for tip number one now tip number two tip number two is going to be a list of build priorities so first thing first you are going to want to build the logging camp second close you are going to want to build the houses so the houses are going to need logs Third, you are going to build the saw pit and you're going to allocate uh, one of uh, your ox for a, for, a few, uh, for a few minutes so that they start building uh, planks as a priority. After that, you are going to upgrade uh, your hitching post into a stable and buy your second ox that is going to be very important later on. Right after that, you should probably start running out of food. So you are going to want to build the forager sut to start collecting berries. As you start out in March, uh, berries are going to be collected throughout the year. So you should be fine with food for a good while. Uh, right after uh, the foraging cut, you should start building up your firewood supply with the woodcutter's lodge right after the woodcutter's lodge you should uh, focus on uh, the market the market is going to be very important so that goods get traded in between the villagers and right after that you are going to pretty much build the trading post now the trading post you are going to be left with 30 gold uh, you are going to buy one ox which is going to cost 20 gold then with the rem remainder of the 30 gold, you are going to set up uh, an exclusive trade uh, for export on planks because planks is going to be your early bread and butter when it comes to profit and planks are going to be made uh, a bunch. Now you are going to sell the planks in order to make money and from there on out, you are going to, uh, you are going to build up your, your village. That is going to be some good early early money now the last thing that you want to do right after you did the trading post is build the church the church is going to be important because that is going to be giving a huge buff to to your villagers and you are going to be able to build up your village get more families joining in and then start building up uh, uh the houses the houses for them as well so this leads us to tip number three, which is going to be about setting up dedicated trades ASAP. Now, trade is very important and you want a dedicated people uh, to set up trade. Uh, dedicated merchants uh, to every trade route instead of relying on families is going to be important because... Um, and for that, of course, uh, the development uh, should be focused on the first two points should go into the trade lo logistics and into better deals. The trade is going to limit the cost to a 25 uh, gold and then uh, the remainder, the better deals is going to be whenever you buy something, you are going to be pretty much buying it at the same price at, at which you are selling because usually buying is more expensive. So you, that is going to be a very important part of the trade. And as you can see, the most important trade routes for myself are being, uh, are being dedicated. Now, of course, 
uh, depending on how much money you have, you are going to want to prioritize which ones are going to be dedicated and which ones are your are going to be handled by your villagers. Tip number four, which is going to be the first year trading priority. Now, I told you to trade planks first, to export as much as possible. The second thing that you should do is once you start, uh, once you start the hunting camps going, and also you sh you should build a few goat sheds. You will have plenty of hides to set up a tannery. Now the tannery is going to ha build uh, is going to craft leather. And the leather should be used to build up uh, cobbler's uh, shops. For the first couple of years, uh, first, first and the second year, a uh, cobbler's shop should be enough. Your village isn't big enough to consume all, all the, um, the shoes it, it is going to be making. But the early trade is going to be set up of planks, of shoes, and, uh, and leather. So leather leather uh, hides and uh, and the shoes that is going to be a lot of money early on and you sh it should help you build up all the sheds all the uh, chicken coops and uh, and the vegetable uh, gardens now tip number five is going to be the list of the second year trading priority which is going to be based on your stockpiles of planks that you are starting to build up and that is going to revolve around small shields, large shields, and wooden wooden crafts. And that is going to be very important because you can cycle these. And as the prices drop on the market of over su uh, supply, you can just uh, switch in between, and you should be able to make uh, you, you should you should be able to keep your profits high. Which leads us to tip number six, which is going to be the third and fourth year trading which is going to be revolving around either iron or farming. Like uh, the thing that I told you about at the beginning of the video, to choose your starting area wisely. Now, if you go for iron, rich iron deposits, you can set up uh, the following trade. It is going to revolve around tools, tools, sidearms, spears, and pole arms. These all are going to be using up iron and it is going to be a huge profit. Now, another thing that you can set up is uh, if you go the farming route, you should probably set up uh, an export of bread, ale, flour, uh, linen, gambesins. Uh, gambesins are going to be crafted uh, with linen and linen is going to, made out, be, made, is going to be made out of uh, flax. Now, of course, uh, as for if we if you really want to min max, uh, I think iron is much more important than farming, and I'm going to tell you later why. But the seventh tip is going to be revolving around storage, uh, and that is that the granary is going to be very important and the storehouse as well. It doesn't need to be manned, but it needs to be there in order for logistics to happen so that people store things in the granary and they take it out and sell it on in the marketplace. So it is going to be helping out a lot more. Now, of course, uh, if you wonder why people in the village complain or why items get moved too slowly, it's probably because you don't have these. Or if the village is uh, big enough, you didn't allocate families to them um, to improve logistics and uh, the market coverage as well. Which leads us to tip number eight, which is regarding logistics and the hitching posts. The hitching posts can be upgraded into stables. And like I said before, you should buy a second ox ASAP, but with time you'll want to get to around four oxen by the second year and six by the third or fourth year, depending on development. Upgrade the hitching posts to stables and start allocating families to improve on logistics. Now, this is very important. Um, if you wonder why you you put down a burgage plot two months, uh, uh, why you put down a burgage plot two months ago and it still isn't being built, regardless of regardless of uh, it being on highest priority, it might be because your oxen are always busy. 
being shared with all the villagers so when dedicating families they are going to pretty much just prioritize every work in order and it should uh, boost logistics overall which leads us to tip number nine which should revolve around the priority list of house upgrades for villagers now this is simple i'm going to list it and then tell you why chicken coops priority number one second you should build goat sheds third you should build vegetable gardens cobbler's workshop for boots that is pretty much covering the first year after that you can start crafting whatever you like so it doesn't really matter but two caveats here is that after the chicken coop you should prioritize goat shed and right after that the vegetable garden in this particular order because uh the vegetable garden is seasoned so it is going to be uh producing vegetables only throughout the summer whereas chicken coops gives you gives you eggs all year round the other thing that needs to be uh, noted is that for vegetable gardens you need to allocate huge land in order to make it very very uh, profitable but uh, as you can see in my uh, in my uh, gameplay uh, what i did is pretty much set up a few burgage plots with huge lands for vegetable gardens so that is pretty much uh, that is pretty much it now for the rest of the crafting tip number 10 which is pretty much the crafting pipelines of the game now weapons in order to build weapons you need a blacksmith the blacksmith is going to use iron and planks usually iron needs to be turned into ingots and you need dedicated villagers to become blacksmiths so let me show you the pipeline the iron is going to be turned into iron slabs which then is going to be turned into tools sidearms spears or pole arms now depending on what the market coverage is for trading you are going to want to export each of these and that's the reason why i told you that iron is much more profitable than farming uh as a priority when you start uh out and you choose your starting location the next in the crafting pipeline is tailoring and the problem uh, the problem with tailoring is it isn't profitable i mean it is good to make gambesons out of two linen but the clothes and cloaks need a lot of dyes and in order to make dye you need berries and you usually use your berries as a food source for your villagers so it's not that profitable but tailoring is an option if you want to have gambesons but it is just much better to trade for it usually and then the next thing is going to be ale now regarding ale it does need barley but as you can see i don't have farming setup and what i do is i import the barley the next thing i do is we send the barley to the malt house which makes the malt and then you can have dedicated villagers making the ale now you can set up one brewery if you want to just um, have your villagers happy or you could set up two breweries in order to export back the ale so you also make a profit you import the barley you make malt you make ale and then you sell the ale which is which sells for much which sells for much better if you can see i import barley at two a price and then i can send it back as eight a piece so that's a six uh gold profit overall fortunately it is best to import it if you don't have fertile land otherwise you can dedicate farmers to that but if you have to choose between farming barley or rye from the development branch it is better to just uh farm barley and you can import the wheat or rye otherwise just choose a rich iron deposit as a starting location and you should be set now tip number 11 is pretty much about crafting bows as of this patch bowmen are blind they don't do ma damage it isn't worth it bows don't sell as well as shields and they use up planks which takes time to produce so just don't war bows no good no bueno just avoid it which also leads us to tip number 12 which is 
that for combat, the best troops are spearmen. Spear militia is one of the best in the game, if not the best. And that is because they take little to no damage and are very good against any type of infantry. So just have as many as you can. And that's pretty much it. You should focus having large piles of large shields and spears for uh, the spear militia. And also you should uh, import helmets, gambesons and chainmail armor for uh, protection. Uh, also, uh, com combat related, this is tip number 13. Uh, at the end of the second year, you are going to be attacked by bandits. Uh, if you play the restoring the peace scenario, or if you do custom scenarios where they can attack earlier on, best thing to do is trade for a constant minimum amount of spears. So the way you want to do this is have a full trade on spears, gambesons and helmets as a beginning so that uh, whenever the fight comes you're going to be ready and all of your all of the men in your families will be equipped uh to their fullest um and that is going to help you out early on in combat now any other tips um don't forget to build a well a well is going to be very important uh, for development and also firefighting um another thing is to build as many forester huts as possible as you can see i built because once you get the logging camp uh to to full family members you're going to go through the land pretty pretty fast like look at this all this area used to be a forest right and now i have forester huts trying to replant all all the trees um any other uh any other um tips um well in order to gr uh, uh grow the towns once you get to a very high amount of population you should probably take um the charcoal burning um perk and that is going to be uh doubling pretty much the firewood amount and it is going to help you with the uh, with the iron with 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 mining and and everything charcoal burning is pretty much doubling the amount of firewood you have and yeah what else can i say i'm doing a playthrough of manor lords trying to rebuild every town from kingdom come deliverance you should subscribe and stay tuned as i'll release more tips as well once i start expanding into multiple regions and the game gets updates See you around, leave a comment, subscribe, like, and thank you for being here.